Have you ever watched a movie just because of the poster? That's what I did with this one. See me. What's up, here, and Welcome back to yet again another movie review. And I got a good one for you today. By the way, before I dive too deep into this video, just to give you a heads up, this video will be spoiler, okay? I'm going to be talking major spoiler throughout the entire movie. If you haven't seen this movie, go and watch it on Tubi TV right now. Then come back and watch the review because I can't talk about this movie without spoiling the movie. You know what I mean? Because this is one of those films where you kind of have to talk about it even though the plot itself is bloody obvious on what the movie is about. So like I said, if you don't want to know what the movie is about, you've never seen it, go watch it on Tubi TV, which is free, and then come back here and watch the review. So, before we dive too deep into this movie, before we get into the good, the bad, and the ugly, let me give you a little bit of plot of what this movie is about. This movie tells a story about a young girl who's basically a high school student and who seems to have very dark desire among her mirror. And things turn... Things turn sinister when she quickly realized that the reflection in the mirror is doing things that she don't quite want it to do. That's the best plot I can give without spoiling the movie, okay? But i let you know when the spoiler section come about. So to kick things off with my first pro will have to be uh, India, India Estelle or something. I don't really know how to say her name, but the girl right here, I love her fucking performance in this movie. I recognize her from The Secret Life, The Secret Life of American Teenagers, excuse me. I used to watch that show, Guilty Pleasure, Don't Judge. But her performance in this movie, is it just me? Do she look like she was spawned or created out of a Tim Burton universe? Like, just look at her. She's gorgeous, by the way. But, yeah, her performance in this film, everything that she does for the character Maria, which we'll get back to in just a second, but everything she does for her performance is so fucking crazy how far she had to go to, to make this movie feel watchable because there are some spots where this movie feels like it's fucking dragging. We'll get there. And so her performance just really just make you be so invested in this movie. And I actually like the movie because of her fucking performance. Next pro I want to talk about is the story slash the plot. So the once this movie gets going and it unfolds, you you actually literally predicted what's gonna happen within about 20 to 25 minutes. Actually, you don't predict it. The movie actually tells you what's about to happen because you start to see her reflection in the mirror doing things that she's not wanting it to do. Now, here's the part where we actually get to major fucking spoiler, okay? Y'all gotta get the fuck out of here. I'm about to spoil this movie because I kind of have to talk about it. So, one of the things about this movie, though, is that it focuses around Maria is talking to herself into the mirror. And so, the reflection in the mirror is doing things that she's not doing. So, if she's drinking some water, on the mirror, she's just standing there looking at herself. And then, as soon as Maria gets through drinking the water, then her character will go back to doing what Maria is doing, which is basically Maria in the mirror, right? And so her character name in the mirror is uh, Amara, I believe. That's pretty much Maria spelled backwards. Which is interesting to me because the movie tells you all this shit is about to happen. Which we'll get to because that goes into my cons with this movie. But yeah, like I said, like the movie tells you everything you need to know. And then once and then once the strap does happen when when Amara goes into society, into the real world, and Maria goes into the mirror and she let her her doppelganger do what she can't do, which is Maria. Basically, Maria is a very shy, soft-spoken person, and she has some insecurities about herself. She's not very vocal. She's not very loud. She's not very uh, optimistic or something like that. But Amara is, so she comes out to be what Maria wants to be, gain that self-confidence, try to burst out of her bubble, get the boy of her dream, and so on and so forth. So that's what Amara is, that's what Maria wants to be. Next pro I actually want to get to is Jason Isaac. I like his performance. He is kind of creepy as fuck in this movie. We'll get back to him as well. But he's kind of fucking creepy in this movie. 
He's really fucking creepy. I mean, and I'm pretty sure that's what they wanted. He did a fantastic job with being that creepy ass father that he was definitely giving me the vibe for. And he also did a good job at being a very concerning father. He also got some layers behind his character too. He kind of had that psychological side of his character that we, that like they kind of explore a little bit, but it kind of shows you through Maria's standpoint because that's who she take it from. Her whole uh, mental illness side of it. I guess that's what they're going to call it in this movie. And so as the movie progresses, you start to see layers behind his character through the eyes of his daughter, which is a very interesting way for them to approach that. Another pro for me would have to be not knowing what the fuck this is, because the movie is titled as a horror, and it's also titled as a fucking suspense. But me personally, myself, I like to label this movie as a psychological thriller, and maybe a little bit of supernatural force, okay? Because the movie doesn't quite know what it wants to be, which I kind of do like, because it allowed my imagination to fucking run wild. And I love that, because your imagination can be far more interested than what a director and a writer can show you. And so the fact that the movie kind of plays on that, I actually enjoy the movie a lot more because of that, because you don't really know what the fuck it is. Moving down into the con, I will have to be completely honest. This movie takes this sweet ass time to fucking get going. Because the movie is bloody obvious on what it is. Within the first 20 to 25 minutes, it pretty much tells you that we're going to be swapping these two characters. It tells you that. It literally plays out exactly what you think. Okay, and the movie takes this sweet ass time to fucking get going. And, it start, and the movie will start to drag. Remember what I talked about, we're gonna get to here. The movie fucking drag. I mean, it drag its ass off. For a very simple plot that you can clearly see coming from a mile away. In the fucking info, the plot itself, it tells you everything you need to know about this movie. And for whatever reason, this movie just wants to drag its ass off. And I'm like, two hours? Really? For something that I know that's about to happen? Another con for me will have to be, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Listen, listen, y'all, you can say what you want. This is a grown-ass woman who plays the role in that movie in 2018. There is no fucking way in hell that the bullies in the movie that were bullying this beautiful little thing, there's no fucking way I bought any of it because the amount of shit that they were doing in this fucking film, they were literally going to the extreme. I think they went too far with the fucking bullying. And there's nothing that they did can convince me that anybody will bully a very attractive woman like this the way that they did in this fucking movie. Now, I get it. I have been bullied before. But it's never been going to the extreme. They pushed her, spit at her, and all kinds of shit. I could work on it forever. And I, I couldn't buy it. There's nothing that I couldn't buy for a second that what they did to this girl was fucking increasing and believable. It, I, I couldn't. I couldn't buy it. I couldn't fucking buy it. Moving down to my final con and the con I really wanted to get to. This movie has a very strange father and daughter relationship. In this movie, they basically hinted at that the father and the daughter possibly either done something, you know, like sexual stuff, or they was, or they wanted to do sexual stuff. For you, if you haven't already known that by now, for you, in the movie, there is a scene where Amira, which is Maria's dabber ganger that came out of the mirror, took her clothes off in front of her dad. I'm not going to say if they did something because of YouTube, but let's just say things don't quite go the, the way you don't want it to, or maybe the way you want it to. I don't know. It depends on what the fuck some of you probably into. But, yeah, like, the relationship between them two is so odd and so weirded out that I almost stopped the movie because of it, but the fact that it was nearly at the end of the movie, you kind of have to let it play out because it was at the end of the movie. My overall thoughts is that Look Away 2018 is actually a blast of a fucking movie. I actually discovered this movie last year and I sat on it for an entire year. 
to fucking review it. And I walked it again at the time of recording the fucking video. I'm like, damn, I have to review this movie because there's a lot to talk about. Anyway, Hell Rangers, this movie gets a massive fucking... I'm going to give this movie a B plus. Okay, I'm gonna give it a B plus. I would give it an A because of the fucking great performance, but the whole father daughter relationship thing just kind of throw me off. But yeah, so if you haven't seen this movie, please check it out on Tubi TV. Remember, for you, you've been warned. But if you made it this far, you're a legend. But still watch the movie. Anyway, that's gonna wrap up today's Pacific review. If you wanna get in touch with your boy, remember all social media link will be in the description down below. I hope to catch you here with you in the next video. But before I let you go, make sure you consider dropping a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on that fucking bell notification. So that way when I drop another lit video for the channel, you'll be the first ones to get it. And remember, stay creepy, stay spooky, and I'll catch you in the next one.